In this video, we're going to be sharing with you a new scientific experiment that will help you persevere, perform better on math tests or tests in general, and do better in school, get better grades. And we'll be cross-referencing this with real-world experience from me to tell you where I agree and where I disagree. So this is very exciting. This experiment in science really helps quantify and uh, create objective advice that you can actually trust. So let's get to it. This experiment was cited in the book Willpower by Roy Baumeister, which I often link to in the description of my videos. What was this experiment? Well, what they did was they had two groups of people. One is the control, which, you know, as a control group, group you just don't really do anything different with, so you can uh, contrast the results. And then they had the, the second group. And in this second group, what they had them do was they had them uh, take out this uh, course book and decide on all these nuances of the curriculum that these, the, these people would um, study in the next semester. So these were students that were part of the experiment and they had to decide stuff like, okay, which films do we want to watch in the, in the coming classes? Which courses do we want to take? What's the curriculum? So they had to make all these choices. And then they, you know, afterwards, they had the, these people take a puzzle. Now, in the waiting room, before taking a puzzle, they uh, surreptitiously set up tempting things so they had video games they had magazines and um, what they found was that the group that made all these decisions beforehand were much more easily tempted to um, to play with these video games and read these magazines even though in that waiting room um, they provided study material to prepare for what was coming for them so they could have spent this time and they were warned ahead of time hey if you sh you should probably check out the study material because it's going to prepare you for this puzzle and the test that's about to come and despite that this group was more likely to be you know tempted away to play these video games so how does that relate to you well what they found in this experiment was that any type of decisions you make even small tiny ones have a significant uh, noticeable outcome in terms of your willpower, your, your depletion in willpower, and therefore all the effects of that. Your uh, likely ability to be tempted to play video games, go on social media, um, and your ability to persevere. So this group that was, uh, had to make these decisions and was more tempted, when they, they took the puzzle, they were also the ones who were uh, much more likely to give up. They were much more likely to give up on the puzzle uh, much faster. They, they gave up much sooner. So not only, so when, when that willpower dropped, all these other bad effects also happened. They were more tempted and they were less likely to persevere and, and more likely to give up. So for you, that means that you have to construct an environment where your decision making, your ability to make decisions, your ability to um, not let your willpower be depleted, has to be uh, more controlled. Uh, that's why Barack Obama, when he was president, didn't choose what clothes he wore every day. He had someone else choose that. Every tiny decision has an impact, especially at his level where he, he's playing at a high level, so everything has to be conserved to the minutia. You don't have to go that extreme, but just consider that. Even small things make an impact. Another experiment that, that's also cited in the book, they had they tested a control group versus shoppers. We're not talking people who had strenuous decisions that they had to make. They just had to make shopping decisions. So they basically went to people after they had been on this uh, shopping spree at the shopping mall, and they had them take these uh, math questions and problems. And guess which group gave up sooner? Was it the control or was it the shoppers? The shoppers had a noticeable faster rate of giving up. So even something that's fun decisions like shopping, can have an impact. Now, to cross-reference this with real-world experience, I have to say, you know, even when I was in high school and I was studying like three hours a day for the SAT, I was taking like half a practice test every three days. Um, I had 
an awareness of this and, and I attempted to control my environment. Not as much as I could have because I, I didn't have this, these scientific studies or the, the details, but I knew enough that I knew like certain things probably weren't beneficial to me. Uh, but I realized looking back that, you know, I got so frustrated when I couldn't control things that were out of my control. And that probably depleted my willpower more than the actual control of it. So one time I was, uh, I was always frustrated because I had younger siblings and they would always, um, they were much younger. So they would be screaming and yelling and playing with each other while I was trying to focus and study. And th I thought I was doing this great grand gesture of focusing on my schoolwork. And my parents, unfortunately, they were like, they're kids. I can't really control them. I can't control the noise. And uh, my mom would tell me, well, you just have to deal with it or you got to suck it up and find somewhere else to live or drive to the library. And so, you know, I, I should have probably just driven to the library. But back then I had it in my head that I don't want to leave the house. It's too much hassle or whatnot. So I did it. And um, that cost me. I think it was more so the anger I felt afterwards than the actual effects of that distraction. Um, honestly, the distraction, while it was annoying, um, I learned from another book by Josh Waitzkin that you have to kind of revel in the distracting noise because that could happen on the day of your performance too. And then, you know, it's a, it's a form of practice. So um, I wouldn't say the, the distracting was really a huge willpower drain. If it had, so if, uh, if it had been something else like making a bunch of decisions that I didn't have to make, that's something more crucial that I had to cut out. But I think referencing my cross, my real experience, all I'm saying is, you know, control as much as you can, but for what you can, either be creative or deal with it. Don't let your emotions destroy you as well by just being so, you know, angered by this that you're, you're destroying your willpower, having fights with your, your family about it. Um, in terms of what you can control, I think it's more than you think. You know, um, when I look at my life, I might think, oh, well, I don't make many big decisions. I, well, you still make decisions whether you like it or not. You decide what you wear every day. You decide whether to go to the gym or not. You decide what to eat every day. How can you automate that? How can you decide weeks in advance or just days in advance? Um, and, and there's other things you decide. You decide what you do with your free time. Um, how can you reduce the decision making? And for some of you, this may be a huge revelation because you're making big decisions as well. Maybe you're in uh, some type of club. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know, Harvard Model Congress. That was a club in my school at one point. And then you're making decisions in that. And then you realize, you know, while this is fun, it's not helping preserve my willpower on study week so I can study more. So think about that, you know, you're making decisions. You're making, you're deciding which YouTube videos to watch. You're deciding what uh, social media to, to, to take out. And I'm, I'm encouraging you not to be super granular about this. Um, if you're a young student, you're not President Obama, so you don't need to cut out every decision because um, it's not to that level where you need to conserve every inch of willpower. But just, you know, using the Pareto principle and taking out a good chunk of it could have a significant noticeable impact. Subscribe, like, I'll see you later.